The symbol I want to talk about is the symbol for pattern speed, which is the Greek capital omega with a little subscript P after it. Most of my research is spent uh, studying galaxies, um, which is a, a glorious thing to do because galaxies are some of the most beautiful things that are out there. And if you actually look at a picture of a galaxy, here's a nice picture of a galaxy. This is a very famous galaxy, the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. And if you look at pictures of galaxies, what makes them beautiful is this beautiful spiral structure that you often see in them. It's different kinds of galaxies, but the spiral galaxies tend to have this very elegant spiral structure. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a paradox in astronomy as to how these spiral arms are actually there. Um, because if you actually measure how fast things are going around a galaxy, you find that the things at the outside are basically going around the galaxy at the same thing, speed as things very close to the centre of the galaxy. That means if you do a little thought experiment of instead of having a spiral galaxy like this, if you actually were to, say, set up a, a, a group of runners on a running track and arrange them in a beautiful spiral pattern on the running track, um, and then make them run a race but all stay in their lanes, and they're all sort of equivalent runners, so they all run at the same speed, what you'd find is very quickly the poor guys in the outside lanes will get very left behind because they've got a lot further to go. That means that your beautiful spiral pattern wouldn't last, right, because the guys on the outside will get left behind, the ones in the mid middle will quickly run away. And so the pattern itself would very quickly get wound up into a very tight pattern. Um, and this is a thing called the winding paradox that basically says that because stars in a galaxy all go around more or less at the same speed, you can't maintain a beautiful structure like this for very long because it would very quickly, the stars on the outside would be left behind and the ones in the middle would run away and so you wouldn't end up with this beautiful spiral structure. But we do. But we do. Um, and so people started worrying about this in the 1960s and realised that there was a possible solution, which is that maybe the thing you're looking at isn't a sort of a, a fixed spiral pattern, but is actually a wave. Um, just like a, a sound wave in the air, for example. It's a, a wave of density that's travelling around the galaxy. And the nice thing about waves is that they don't have to travel at the same speed as the medium that they're in. So, for example, sound in air travels at 300 metres per second, and it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing at 5 metres per second or 10 metres per second, you can still have a sound wave pro propagating through it. And so the idea was it's the same thing going on here. You have kind of a wave of density that's travelling through this thing, and what you're actually seeing in the beautiful sort of lit-up spiral arms is where that, there's that maximum of density. And where you have that maximum of density, you end up making stars, and you're basically seeing the young stars forming in those spiral arms. But then the, what, the pattern will travel around, uh, sort of independent of the speed which individual stars are travelling within the galaxy. What's made this wave, and what's, what is the wave? So, what, that, those are two quite difficult questions, neither of which really has a definitive answer yet. What makes the wave is not entirely clear. In the case of, of uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy, this guy here, um, what this picture doesn't show is that just off the edge of the picture, there is, this galaxy has a companion, and so it's thought in that case the companion is sort of stirring up this wave as it's travelling around uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy. In other cases, it's really less clear. Um, and one of the things that I've been trying to do by studying this thing, the pattern speed, which is basically just how fast that pattern's rotating, how fast the wave's travelling around the galaxy, is trying to answer some of those questions, trying to figure out exactly what the nature of the wave is, whether it really is going to last for a long time, um, and, and you know, what, what its ultimate fate's going to be, whether this spiral structure would eventually just disappear. If it wasn't for these waves, what would the galaxy look like? They'd be very boring, they really would, because it's these, these, these beautiful waves travelling around are the thing that sort of makes the, thing, that makes the galaxy look pretty. And it's really, it's again, rather analogous to the ocean, right? The oceans, when they're flat, are really pretty dull things to look at. It's the waves travelling in and breaking on the shore are the things that makes the ocean look pretty. And it's kind of the same thing here, that there are waves travelling around this thing and they're, and they're sort of lighting up the galaxy as they go. And they're really what makes the galaxy look so beautiful. There's lots of speculation and there's lots of different questions that you can try and answer by measuring these pattern speeds in these galaxies. For example, another kind of galaxy um, has these bar structures in the middle. And again, it's thought to be more or less the same thing, that there's a pattern there that's rotating. And a few years ago, there was a theory that said that these bars shouldn't actually be rotating very quickly because the interaction between that bar and the dark matter that fills the galaxy should make the bar slow down. Essentially, the bar should just, sort of by a, a friction-type process, should lose its rotational motion and slow down. So we made some of the first ever measurements of pattern speeds and actually found that most of these bars weren't slowing down at all. They were whizzing around at high speed. And that then led to people changing their ideas a little bit about the nature and distribution of dark matter within galaxies. So as well as sort of telling you something about the galaxy itself, you can use these measurements of pattern speeds within galaxies um, to try and learn other things about the properties of the galaxy itself. In simple terms, you're basically measuring how many degrees per second the galaxy goes round. Now, because it takes 
hundreds of millions of years for a galaxy to rotate, the number of degrees per second that it rotates at is a tiny number. So that's not usually the unit that you actually use. But that really is the, the fundamental unit, is radians, or the unit of, of angle per second, or degrees per second, is really what you're measuring. The measurements are sufficiently difficult that there's probably half a dozen galaxies in total these measurements have been made for. And indeed, some go faster than others. And one of the things we're just starting to try and do is try and figure out what the difference is. Why is it that some are going faster than others? There's one further subtlety here, which is that we've developed the technique to a point where we can actually not only measure a pattern speed for a whole galaxy, but see whether the pattern speed actually varies with position in the galaxy. In other words, it sort of goes back to this winding paradox. Are these things really sort of set structures that just sit there for hundreds of millions of years, or is the pattern actually evolving? Are different bits of the pattern going around at different speeds? And again, the slightly surprising result we found from that is that the answer is it depends which galaxy you look at. Some of them do seem to have these nice sort of set patterns that are set for, for all time. Other galaxies seem to be evolving very quickly. Our Sun, as I understand it, currently sits in one of the Milky Way's arms. Does that mean the time will come when we're no longer in an arm? Yeah, we travel in and out of the arms over time. And in fact, the arm we're in at the moment is not the arm we were in when the Sun was formed. So the, the Sun sort of mi is migrating its way around the Milky Way and spends some of its time in spiral arms, some of its time not in spiral arms. Does the sun move into and out of the arms, or do the arms sweep through the sun? It depends where you are in the galaxy. Okay? In some parts of the galaxy, the stars are actually travelling faster than the pattern. In other parts of the galaxy, the pattern's travelling faster than the stars. So in some places, the wave kind of catches up with the stars. In other places, the stars catch up with the waves. One of the pieces of evidence that, um, that these things really are waves that are causing star formation comes from studying supernova, studying exploding stars. Um, and so in this, this galaxy, the Whirlpool Galaxy, it turns out there have been several supernovae in recent times. Um, so in 2000, so here's a picture of the galaxy. In 2005, you can see this bright object appeared here. That someone's conveniently put little yellow marks in to guide the eye, but there was a supernova. And then in summer 2011, another of these uh, supernovae went off. Now the thing about these supernovae is they tend to be very massive stars. They're the only ones that really explode in this particular type of supernova. Um, and the thing about very massive stars is they have very short lifetimes, at least in terms of you know, a galaxy's lifetime and the rotation of the galaxy and so on, which means that they basically explode at the same place the star was born. And the interesting point to note here is that both of these supernovae occur within the spiral arms. So this is telling you where star formation is actually going on, and the star formation really is going on within the spiral arms, and it's an indication that the spiral arms are the, the, the site of star formation because that's where the gas is being compressed by this density wave that then leads to star formation that then very rapidly leads to the most massive stars exploding as supernovae.